When it comes to fulfilling the dream of building robots that can be human companions, Japanese roboticists have been at the forefront for decades. The Japanese government had established a goal of having every home adopt a robotic lifestyle by 2025, which includes safe, comfortable, and convenient living with the assistance of companion machines. But this time, Japan has taken a new initiative into consideration of female robots being more advanced. So what is Japan trying to do? Stay tuned till the end because a piece of very intriguing information is waiting for you. Japan has been the clear leader in robotics for many years. If Tanzania's Olduvai Gorge is the birthplace of humans, then Japan is the birthplace of humanoids. In the 1970s, Japan made the first humanoid robot, and since then, they've made many more. Japanese roboticists were the first to think that AI should have a body, while people in the West focus more on algorithms in general. Institutions in Japan thought that AI innovations should be made along with or rather inside of a physical artificial body. Japanese roboticists have been at the forefront of the effort to make robots that humans can get along with for decades. The Japanese have made robots that care for the sick and elderly and make friends with them. They have almost made robots that can fight fires, carry heavy loads, and give patients physical therapy. This time, Japan is planning to build female humanoid robots that can get pregnant. At first glance, the idea of a mechanical robot giving birth to a child is insane. However, many of the technologies we use today began as ridiculous notions at one point or another. Every year, we overcome limits that looked uncrossable a decade ago, explore theories that seemed ridiculous a decade ago, and build companies that were called science fiction when we were kids. Naturally, you're probably wondering why the term robot is applied to anything that is a living, breathing, or organic life form. Most of us have preconceived notions about what a robot is and how it should behave, but even our dictionaries leave the specifics open to interpretation. Our understanding of mechanical machines will evolve through time, from purely mechanical devices to hybrid mechanical or organic contraptions, largely alive machines and pure synthetic life forms, with the process of making machines being superseded by the process of producing them. During this period, artificial intelligence will be gradually superseded by degrees of synthetic intelligence, followed by what many will regard as a superior kind of genuine intelligence. The live intelligence of one bot will be birthed into each new generation, building on what is already knows exhibiting the same qualities as humans, living, breathing, and evolving from baby bots into biomimetic versions of ourselves, except with many fewer defects, ideally. But that's when things become complicated. The philosophical basis of our humanness and whether humans are superior to synthetic life forms will resurface over time, with many claiming that our so-called human feelings are truly fundamental components of higher-order emotions like compassion and empathy. How did the biorobotics revolution? Arthur C. Clarke developed the term biot, a creative description meaning organic robot in his 1972 novel Rendezvous with Rama. Biots are presented in the novel as artificial biological entities intended to perform certain functions in space. A number of new fields are emerging that bridge the gap between biology and robotics. This ranges from cybernetics to bionics, biomimicry, and synthetic biology. Jean-Pierre Sauvage, Sergei Fraser Stoddard, and Bernard Feringa were awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for figuring out how to arrange atoms to construct tiny machines that can operate like motors, elevators, muscles, and even a basic car with four wheels. Their innovations are approximately 1,000 times narrower than human hair. They are printing with human tissue, stem cells, and even artificial blood cells using 3D printers. Other 3D printers can produce bone, cartilage, muscle, teeth, organs, blood veins, and even ears. Ironically, it appears that we are on the verge of adopting the Mr. Potato Head technique to replace bodily parts. Cloning entered the public consciousness in 1996 with the cloning of Dolly the Sheep. Since then, scores of different species including camels, dogs, deer, horses, monkeys, cows, frogs, rabbits, and many more have been cloned. Human cloning has long been debated as a natural continuation of animal research, promising a precise genetic replica of any individual. There is a distinction to be made between natural clones, which manifest as identical twins in humans and other mammals, and manufactured clones. For a more scientific explanation, Artificial cloning is classified into three types, gene cloning, reproductive cloning, and therapeutic cloning. Gene cloning creates duplicates of genes or DNA segments. Reproductive cloning duplicates entire animals. Therapeutic cloning generates embryonic stem cells for trials aimed at replacing injured or diseased tissues. 
Cloning procedures are commonly used by researchers to create copies of genes that they want to examine, such as bacteria, yeast cells, viruses, or plasmids. Despite multiple widely publicized allegations, human cloning appears to be a work of fiction. There's currently no credible scientific evidence that a human embryo has been cloned. Synthetic biology is the creation of biological systems using engineering techniques. Converging forces in chemistry, biology, computer science, and engineering gave rise to synthetic biology. Consider it a biology-based toolkit that uses algorithms and automated processes to alter how we construct, control, and repair biological systems. Synthetic biology will eventually allow us to program DNA to create custom foods, fuels, and vaccines. By combining cloning with cybernetics, robotics, and synthetic biology, we can begin to grasp the foundation for replicable created living forms. All we lack is the ability to create reproductive organs. Futurist speaker Thomas Frey, Japanese researchers, developed an artificial womb for goat fetuses in the mid-1990s. Emmanuel Greenberg patented the first artificial womb in 1955, more than 60 years ago. Japanese researchers succeeded in nurturing goat babies for weeks in a machine containing artificial amniotic fluid in the mid-1990s. Recent advances in newborn intensive care have reduced the minimal gestational age for human fetuses to fewer than 22 weeks. That's only about halfway through a typical 40-week pregnancy. The technology isn't nearly as outlandish as it appears. As a replacement organ, an artificial uterus could have a wide range of applications. For example, if a fetus was transferred from a natural uterus to an artificial one with extended functions, doctors could treat a variety of conditions independent of the mother's situation, such as her being sick or in an accident. And it even opens the door to performing certain types of fetal surgery earlier rather than waiting until after birth. Scientists at Cambridge University undertook a series of attempts to grow human embryos for a full 14-day period within a petri dish, exceeding an association of 17 nations ethical limit for this type of study. Each day of development allowed researchers to investigate both the morphological and genetic changes that happened in the developing embryo. Marta Shabazi, the study's author, was startled to discover that a human embryo could direct its own development, even after it had reached the stage where it should have implanted into the uterus without any guidance from the mother. Naturally, this raises the questions of whether an artificial boom is properly constructed would be capable of carrying a developing person to term. It also raises a slew of issues regarding all of the conditions required for the development of a functional human being, despite the fact that we struggle to define what a functional human is. Because conducting this study on genuine human embryos is considered controversial, testing on artificial embryos or synthetic embryos is a natural next step because they don't carry the same stigma. And what about robots that bear babies? With this brief summary of some of the most recent breakthroughs, the concept of a robot giving birth to a baby, either a human baby or a robot baby, no longer seems so far-fetched. Indeed, it appears entirely possible that a future news headline will read, World's first synthetic human robot gives birth to its own offspring. Could truly weather, gravity, and time have long been speculative sciences that have progressed from science fiction to science possibility? And the thought of robots giving birth to robots is approaching the same level of practicality. Many of our advancements in the future years will test our senses. They will test our notion of what it is to be alive, our human rights, our moral compass, our feeling of authority, and most importantly, the ethical boundaries of science. That doesn't change the fact that they're on their way. So that's all for today. And if you like today's video, then do check out more videos like this in our channel. Also, do subscribe to our channel and hit the like button for more updates.